On our previous episode, we spent a couple of days in a Polish village where we learned how to make pierogi. Then we got on a train to Warsaw, and now we're about to check in our hotel. Over the next two days, we will be exploring Warsaw's history and, of course, eating a lot of amazing food. Welcome to our Warsaw room for the next two nights. It is really nice. Let me take you around. The bed looks really comfy. I gotta point out these pillows. So we noticed in Poland, these are like pretty standard pillows. Um, not these, these. They're pretty big, they're like a square. Pretty nice, I like it. Got a lot of space here. It's um, it's actually an apartment. It's it's kind of like an, it's a hybrid between a hotel room and an apartment. Got quite a bit of space. Olivia's favorite. Some nice heavy robes. And I gotta say, I'm a clean freak, so everything is living up to my standards. It's really really clean. The Airbnb we had in Gdansk, maybe. Not so much. And then we come into the kitchen area, which is right by the entrance, actually. More space, so we kind of put our backpacks in here. You got like coat uh, hanging thing. And it's a pet friendly room, so it's pretty neat. I haven't seen something like this before. If you have your pet, obviously you don't want someone coming in. And then we got the bathroom. It's really nice. And then I gotta say the whole room smells so good. So, any guesses how much we paid for this room per night? Okay, I'll tell you. But maybe hit the like button first and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We'd really appreciate that. Dziękuję. It was about $60 a night. In a lot of other European countries to get this kind of quality, uh, right now with the prices that we are seeing, it would be over $200 a night. We're really happy. Um, we're gonna enjoy ourselves, maybe we'll go do a quick workout, but first we gotta grab some food. Since Warsaw is a more of a cosmopolitan city here, we might be having a different cuisine. We'll see, we're, we're still looking at our options, but let's just get going and we'll see where we end up. The hotel reminds me of like a Great Gatsby, like Roaring Twenty style, but like really modern. I like, I like when you have old accents and kind of a classic feel, but it's modern. I think the floor, they were trying to do that too. you walk in, it seems like the restaurant and the seafood market are separate, so for the restaurant, we keep going. Bad news, it's a Saturday and it's reservation only. Let's see what we can do. Right. Wish us luck, we find something. <laughs> So we finally found a restaurant. It's not what we were looking for, but it's Italian, it's hot pasta. Buon appetito. We're heading back to our hotel now. That was a delicious meal. We're doing a little shortcut through this beautiful park. And because it's fall and the leaves are falling, it looks really nice. Um, so it's a really nice walk. And apparently Warsaw has a lot of parks. It's quite a big city, so... We're gonna be exploring more. The city of Warsaw played an extremely important role in World War II, and to learn more about that, we are on our way to the Uprising Museum of Warsaw. It's important to know that the museum isn't about the 1943 uprising of the Warsaw Ghetto, which is, I think, one of the biggest Jewish ghettos in the country of Poland at the time. It's about the 1944 uprising of the country and the city against occupied forces. Warsaw was actually completely destroyed during the war and it's a really dark but really rich part of history and we're excited to learn more.
So right in the heart of the museum, they have a wall which is pretty much the heartbeat dedicated to everyone that fought and fell during the uprising and the war. So you can hear like any sounds you probably would have heard if you were in the city at the time. If you come to the museum, make sure you don't come in when there's a bunch of buses outside. It is very overwhelming. Um, we kind of skipped the beginning of the museum to go see it later because it's just, you can't even walk through it. There's so many people. So right here, it's kind of something pretty unique. They had these paper dolls donated to the museum from during the war. There was a 17-year-old girl who made these during the time of the occupation to kind of depict what life was like at the time. And you can see it almost looks as if they're brand new. They're in really good shape. So this is another exhibition by another artist at the time. Kind of looking at the, like the art and the paintings and then the other ones, there's definitely a similar style with the colors and the, the techniques. I wonder if that was more of like a depiction or more of what they learned here at the time. Grown-ups kissing someone's wife, but I won't see them kissing anymore, cause I'll be gone. So they kind of have a little exhibit in the museum showing that we're not really different than the people that were affected at the time. And they have this thing where it matches your face with someone they have record of at the time, just to kind of show that we're not that different. What do you guys think? Did we look like our lookalikes? I'm not quite sold on it because the sensor was by the legs and I didn't see any face scanner anywhere near the face. And then the guy after us got a guy. We're almost done with the museum. It's quite big, so um, if you come, make sure you dedicate quite a bit of time. Especially if you're like a history buff and you want to read every single detail, yeah. you're going to be here for about four hours. Otherwise, you can do it in like an hour, I'd say. An hour and a half. An hour and a half, depending on the crowds, too. But I just ain't got a reason to stick around. Brothers and sisters, I love you and wish you goodbye, cause I'll be gone. Ooh. Far, far away. It's interesting visiting a museum about war and seeing all that stuff. Uh, right now because of what's going on in Ukraine. You can see a lot of the parallels. And I think it's also interesting to see, like, go to a museum like that during war versus if we went to this museum maybe like a year ago, yeah, a year ago or two years ago, maybe we would go in with like a different perspective versus now you go in and you were kind of seeing the same things and maybe you can understand a little more of the feelings at the time. Yeah, and then you also add in the kindness of the Polish people welcoming so many Ukrainians and that. Because they've been through that themselves, yeah, so it's so like they know. Of... Yeah. So we've been in a more modern part of the city with a lot of skyscrapers. Now I think we're going to head into the Old Town Market Square. And lighten things up. And how are we going to get there? We're gonna get there with scooters. <laughs> Our favorite way of travel. Streets don't seem scary either. Yeah. Seems like a very gentle city to ride scooters. just learned that during World War II, they had no plans to rebuild it. It took a long time and a lot of people actually caring to rebuild the city. Warsaw was completely destroyed and that kind of left the city in shambles. And what they ended up doing was 
Like you see this is, it looks like an old town, but this isn't the original structures. They actually recreated the old town with the original architecture to keep it as accurate as possible. Quite nice. I mean, it's different when it's not the same thing, but it seems pretty accurate, so. through a lot of the old town of Warsaw and found our way to the Old Town Market Square, which is known by many as one of the most beautiful squares in Europe. And you can see why. I mean, it's not that big, but the, the facade of the buildings is very beautiful. So I guess we'll start with some mulled wine. How does it always happen this way? It just like it's it, it's like the thing to do. So you just pick it up and <laughs> drink it. Drink it. But this place, you can choose the flavor that your alcohol will have in there. So they have the wine plus the liqueur. I can't tell if it's liqueur or oh, it's vodka. It's flavored vodka. Nostro, yeah. How much was all this? Well, Olivia and everyone watching, it was seven point five dollars. Seven and a half. This is the uh, chicken with champignon and barley. Let's see, I've been a big fan of uh, tomato soup here in Poland. This one looks a little different. It looks more watered down. Probably broth, maybe some water, and it has noodles in there. So let's see how this is. Yeah, it's, it tastes nice, but it's very watered down. I like it when it's more thick. You also got a vegetarian option. Well, the soup was vegetarian, so we have another vegetarian option over here. It's called a cabbage roll with lentils inside and tomato. And this is our view from where we're sitting. So I really like meat cabbage rolls, so it's a disappointment, but lentils are great too. <laughs> really nice. Hello. Hello. One uh, is a piekanka with ham and mushrooms. Thank <laughs> So this is Polish pizza. It's on a baguette with ham, mushrooms, and some ketchup on top. So let's see how this is. I'm gonna go from over here. That's really nice. The baguette is so soft and I don't know it just becomes like the, the breading of the baguette becomes so, so creamy and then you have the crust that's like crispy. Olivia has been looking for this so curious to see what she thinks. It's way bigger than I thought it would be. I think they probably do it different sizes at different places and it's funny Growing up, from time to time, we would have the, like these frozen French bread pizzas, and I never thought it was an actual thing somewhere. Yeah, here we are. It's quite nice, and I think either it's like the mix of the other flavors, but the ketchup tastes more like a tomato sauce, or like the tomato we had in the pizza. So, yeah, it's really good, and I like that the baguette isn't too hard. Okay, so we finished our pizza and now we have one more food stop, which is Polish donuts. What are they called? Puczki. Puczki, and they're really delicious. So we can't leave Poland without having some. This place has so much demand that they don't have enough time to bring out the donuts. They, have, they just keep making them in the back. They only had three options by the time we got there. Um, so we got the toffee, not a bad choice. I love caramel, so. Well, you can tell it was like freshly fried, so warm. Yeah, and that place seems to be really popular, really good reviews, not a single tourist. We're the only non-Polish people in line and it was a big line. So high expectations and pretty good price too. Um, the one that seems to be a, a chain that we had in Krakow, it was uh, 16 zolte. Yeah, that's like. Versus this one that was six zolte. 
Wow, that is a big difference. Big difference. So this shape is actually more like a boat shape, whereas the one we had in Krakow and I'm used to is the circular. But I did before we got this, before they ran out, they had circular ones, so maybe it depends on the filling. It is so warm. It literally just got glazed. We saw them glazing so it. It's probably hot in the middle of here. Wow. Is this white chocolate one? Hmm. Yeah, because she said white chocolate with um, cookie topping. White chocolate is good too. <laughs> we are finishing our day in Warsaw. Thank you for coming along with us in Warsaw and checking out the city and to the channel if you haven't already. We really appreciate that. We do. Bye. Hold on one second. Before we go, we're gonna try one more time to go into this restaurant that's supposedly one of the best restaurants in all of the city of Warsaw. And Warsaw is a really big place, so we're really curious. They're elephants. It's like a Warsaw staple. There's a word I'm thinking of, but I can't think of it. Well, Warsaw Stable, we'll call that. And last time we are here, we were denied because we needed reservations, but it was a Saturday evening, so it's a Monday. And uh, I think there's gonna be space for us. We're gonna eat burgers, but Olivia got an oyster since she loves them. I've discovered something about myself in the last year. I don't care how it seems, but I love oysters and bubbly champagne together, so. I don't know what this is, but I want to try it. It's probably a bee. I know. No, I think it's like it's like it's like a pickled onion sauce. I love me some garnish. And then this is supposed to be for after the uh, the oyster, which I'm curious. Oh. Oh. What is it? Oh. Oh, what is it? I don't know. You can find out yourself. I don't even know why I like them. I just, I think the flavor with like... Just all in. No. All in. Just go all in. No. How good is that? I probably got a dessert. I don't like that. Oh my god, it smells amazing. I think it's just accepted that burgers always have made of lettuce. Nice. Basically, Olivia and I got the same thing, just uh, she got cheese on hers and I did it. So, um, and I got the french fries versus Olivia got the Belgian fry. This meal is $11, which is higher up on the price range. Got some chipotle aioli over here. Let's see, one bite fits all. <laughs> Hello, my queens. Yeah. <laughs> the burger is amazing. I think this is the best burger I've had in a very, very long time. I can't remember the last time. It was probably in the US, the last time I had a burger this good. The fries are really nice. Let's try the chipotle sauce. Oh, it's um, Ayo. sriracha Ayo, the sauce. Mm. Nice. I just gotta say one more time how amazing this was from the bread all the way to the burger bun. Fantastic. Excellent job. I can see why the reviews are so amazing. If you are in Warsaw, you eat burgers, come here, you're not going to regret it.